Good morning, class. Today, I'm going to share to you the lesson how to use the left hand equation in solving a particular word problem. So let me share this PowerPoint presentation. All right. So let's have solving a word problem using the Diophantine equation. So this is my sample word problem. A man has $4.55 in charge composed entirely of dimes and quarters. What are the maximum and minimum number of coins that he can have? Is it possible for the number of dimes to equal the number of quarters? Okay, so let's can solve that one. But let's have the given first. So the word dime means 10 cent coin. That also means one tenth dollar. So we can represent the word dime as the number 0 0.10. And we will let x be the number of dimes. So these are the, the number of coins representing the dimes. And if we have the word quarter, that means 25 cent coin. That also means one fourth dollar. So we can represent the word quarter as the number 0 0.25. We let y be the number of the quarters. So these are the number of coins representing quarters. So we do not know yet the number of coins of dimes and quarters, but we know that their total value is $4.55. So let's have the solution. Because of the given, we're able to generate or derive this equation. So it will be easier if we use the integers, the whole numbers. So uh, we can uh, transform or convert these decimal numbers into whole numbers by the multiplication of 100. So 100 times 0.10x and 100 times 0.25y and 100, 100 times 4.55. So the resulting equation will be 10x plus 25y equals to 455. And because of this equation with integral numerical uh, coefficients, we can have the values for A, B, and C. These variables are very important in using the, the Diophantine equation. So we can have A equals to 10, B equals to 55, C equals to 455. Right. So let's have step A. Let's let's find the greatest common divisor of the numbers 10 and 25. And obviously, the greatest common divisor is 5. Right? Because 10 is 5 times 2. 25 is 5 times 5. So looking at the factors, we can really say that the greatest common divisor is 5. This is the common divisor. OK? So that will be the value of t. It will be, um, let us divide into, uh, the let us divide the bigger number by the smaller number. 25 divided by 10, that gives us the quotient 2. And then we multiply the quotient two by the divisor. And then if we use that additional uh, division process, the remainder is five. So what we do with the remainder? We are making the remainder as an addend to the product of the divisor and the quotient. Okay, this is a Euclidean algorithm. And then next step, we divide this divisor here by the greatest common divisor five. So 10 divided by 5, that gives us the quotient 2. And then, OK, so we multiply the quotient 2 as a factor multiplied to the divisor 5. And then using the traditional div div division process, the remainder 0. So we're making the remainder 0 as an addend to the product of 5 and 2, 5 times 2. Take note, this point here represents multiplication. This means 10 times 2. This means five times two. Okay, this is these points here are not decimal points. Okay, letter C. We go back to the equation with integral numbers. So we're we're trying to equate five in terms of these expressions in the left hand side. Okay, from this equation with integral uh, numbers. Right. So we have five because two. Okay, you might wonder where I get this. So my source is the step B. 
you can see that you can get the value of five if we transfer 10.2 to the left-hand side, having 25 minus 10.10 times two in the left-hand side. And indeed, uh, 25 minus 20 is really equal to five. So I'm just doing the reverse. Okay, so five equals to 25 minus 10 times two. Really, 35 minus 20, the difference is really five. Okay, so I will maintain five with the left-hand side. We are manipulating this. Okay, 35 does, uh, does not have any factor. So we can have one because any number multiplied the one by one, the number remains itself. Then we have 10 times two, okay, as is. We can do the, we can apply the commutative property of numbers. So we can write a negative 10 times two here. And we, uh, we write one times 25 as the right, as the term right of the term negative 10 times two. Next, um, we're trying to equate five using these integral numbers. So we must see to it that 10, numbers 10 and 25 are always positive, okay? So because of that, this negative sign here is transferred, okay? This is transferred to uh, number two. So, so in the last line, we have 10 times negative two. 25 times one, there's no negative sign, so as is. And then we're able to show that five is really equal to this expression with the numerical number, uh, numerical coefficients 10 and 25. And we, okay, that's okay. Okay, we maintain that 10 and 25 are positive. So we have the integral values of x and y. It's okay to have negative numbers. Okay, but instead of using x and y, we use uh, variables u and v. Okay, because this is not yet final. This, the variables u and v are very important to compute the values of x naught and y naught, right? So if you multiply this one, negative 20 plus 25, correct. The sum is five. Let's have step D. So we are computing the values of x naught and y naught. Okay, so we are doing the substitution here. So u is replaced by negative two, c replaced by 455, d replaced by five. We are doing the multiplication in the numerator and then the product is divided by five. So the result is negative 182. This is the value of x naught, okay, x naught. Why not, okay, we have vc times d. So v is replaced by one, c replaced by 455, d replaced by five. So doing the multiplication in the numerator and then Dividing this product by five, the result is 91. So the result of y naught is 91. Okay, let's have step uh, E. So let's review the values of the variables. We have A equals to 10, B equals to 25, C equals to 455, T equals to five. X naught is negative 182, and Y naught equals to 91. And then let us consider this another for this another pair of this pair of formulas. Okay, so these are the final expressions for this is the final expression for x, this is the final expression of for y. Right? So let's start with x. So x naught is negative 182. B is replaced by 25, D is replaced by 5. So simplifying this expression, we have x equals to negative 182 plus 5t. For y, okay, y naught is replaced by 91, a is replaced by 10, d is replaced by 5. So we just maintain t as an unknown variable. So simplifying this expression, we have y equals to 91, minus 2t. Step F. So we only have the important expressions for x and y. 
So what we do now is to um, ensure that the values of x and y are greater than or equal to 1 because if we're talking about the number of coins, there's no number of coins that is a negative or a fraction. It cannot be because we're talking about the number of coins. It should be 1, 2, 3, 5, and so on. As long as positive counting numbers. That's why we are making an in, uh, making the inequality such that negative 182 plus 5t is greater than or equal to 1. Same with y, because y is the number of quarter coins. So it should be greater than or equal to 1. So 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth, as long as positive counting numbers. So for x, Okay, let's start with x. We have 5t, negative 182 is transferred to the right-hand side. So we have plus 182. Okay, so 5t equals to 1 plus 182, that is 183. Dividing both sides of the inequality by 5, so we have t is greater than or equal to 36.5. For y, okay, so we transfer 91 to the right-hand side. So we have negative 91. In the right hand side, so negative 2t is greater than equal to 1 minus 91. All right, so 1 minus 91 is negative 90 in the right hand side. So we have this inequality. And to solve for t, we divide both sides of the inequality by negative 2. So we have t is greater than equal to 45. So these values of t are very important in finding the values of x and y using the number line. So Let's have step G, right? So we can have the number line. We're very sure that 36.5 is the first number and the later number is 45, right? So we're having these inequalities. We can combine them into 36.5 is less than or equal to T and T is less than or equal to 45. So this Inequality expression uh, can be represented by this number line. So we only consider the integers, okay, like 37, 38, 9, 40, 1, 2, 3, 44, as the values of 45, as the values of t, okay? We do not get 37.5, 39.1. We only get the positive color numbers, the integers, the positive integers between 36.5 and 45. And this is the result. Okay, so we only get the integers, the integral values between 36.5 and 45. So if we substitute t in the expressions for x and y, this is the result. So if we have x, if we replace the variable t in the x expression by the following values, the values of x are the following. These are the values of x. If we replace the variable t in this y expression. So if we replace t by these values, the resulting y values are, we have the following, 17, 15, until 1. And if we go back to the equation, the original equation, if you, um, if you do the substitution using these x and y values, it is guaranteed that the sum is always 4.55. So going back to the question, uh, because of using the elephant equation with this table construction, we can now uh, solve the questions from the word problem. So this is the answer, this is the conclusion. The fewest coins are three dimes and 17 quarters. This one, no? The fewest number of coins. Three plus 17, that is 20. Whereas 43 dimes and one quarter give the largest number. That's true. 43 plus one, 44. No, the largest number of coins. And it is possible to have 13 dimes and 13 quarters. So it's really possible to have the equal number of dime coins and the quarter coins like this. 
Yes, you can. We can really say that that the the infinite equation is really amazing. We're able to get the list of values of x and y. Yes, no. The infinite equation is really a gift from the Lord. Uh, we really thank. We should really thank the mathematicians for able to derive this concept, like the infinite equation. So thank you for listening, friends, class. I hope you have learned something from my discussion. May God bless you. By the way, do not forget to uh, hit the, don't forget to click the subscription button and hit the, don't forget to hit the notification bell for more updates. Thank you for listening. May God bless you all. Bye.